Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down game three of the Western Conference semifinals matchup between the Memphis Grizzlies playing on the road, going into Golden State and Oracle Arena, and to face off against Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and the rest of the Golden State Warriors. But before we get started with today's episode, if you are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five star rating, like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notification and give us a nice review on both Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all other podcast streaming platforms. I'd greatly appreciate that. So would the rest of our people here at the Off The Ball Network. But without further ado, let's get started with today's episode. Because, you know, th- there was a ton of things that happened in this Game 3 matchup that we definitely have to break down. Obviously, John Morant, you know, he he continued to have himself a pretty good game. But, you know, the rest of his supporting cast just simply did not show up. We got to highlight those things. And... You know, Golden State put up 142 points in this game. So we got to break down how all of those things, you know, kind of came into fruition. And heading into this game, you know, I want to talk about Jaron Jackson Jr.'s impact, right? Because outside of game one, he really has not had that much of an impact on this series. Um, You know, in game one, he did a great job in terms of being aggressive. Um, He's one of those guys that shoots his way into the game rather than, you know, trying to uh, impose his will with his, you know, interior dominance and, and things of that nature, right? Because, you know, he, he it's, it's just his preferred style of play. And a lot of Memphis Grizzlies fans finish watching those these Grizzlies games just wanting a little bit more out of Jaron Jackson Jr. every single matchup. Defensively, you know, heading into this matchup, you know, he led the postseason in fouls, right? You know, he's got, he had 40 fouls heading into this matchup. And I think that's something that we definitely have to note, given, you know, Memphis defensively, in this game specifically you know they struggled a lot and i think on the defensive end of the basketball and even offensively memphis doesn't really have any advantages in any facet or dynamic in this entire series you know there's no rim protection defensively you know they they cannot really defend and obtain these golden state warriors small ball lineups that downhill initiating with drives pin downs they cannot really minimize any of the actions that golden state is trying to run out there and that's obviously going to be a huge issue dylan brooks you know him serving that suspension this game we didn't see him for the entirety of the night you know he he didn't even make it into the building which is probably a smart move by the organization that way you know he doesn't have to deal with any antics from fans and things of that nature right but you know defensively he is somebody that you can you know rely on to use some of his fouls you know kind of prevent golden state from scoring within the half court setting and in certain instances in transition obviously in gary payton's situation you know he's obviously stopped them from scoring on that possession but we we definitely did not want to see a guy like gary payton the second you know someone who's been so valuable to this golden state warriors team in this series go down and suffer from an injury and you know be out for nearly a month right but you know just to highlight some things in the game specifically in the first quarter memphis did a great job in terms of punching them in the mouth right you know they were getting defensive stops which led them to turn offense into defense getting out in transition zaire williamson being the recipient of a lot of lob passes john morant scoring around the basket d'anthony melton tyus jones knocking down perimeter shots in transition and you know they started this game on an 18-8 run right and you know it kind of looked like you know this golden state warriors crowd wasn't really able to really get into it in that first quarter and golden state you know they committed a few turnovers right in that first half specifically i believe going into the half they had about seven to ten turnovers or something like that but you know the the memphis was able to score off of those turnovers right nights they had 19 points off of turnovers in the first half really doing a great job in terms of you know just uh maximizing on those extra possessions and just being able to you know take away from golden state's offense which was rolling despite their slow start you know in the first half golden state finished sh- the half shooting 70 percent from the field and 60 percent from the three-point line so those extra possessions that memphis was coming up with definitely were extremely warranted for their success especially given you know this half court offense is not really all that prolific and profound and you know they can't really compete tick for tat against this golden state warriors offense in comparison right and you know one thing i want to talk about memphis defensively outside of them being able to you know force a lot of steals and you know some turnovers on golden states and their their defense perimeter wise is something that, that has to be addressed at the end of this offseason right you know i think you know john morant he 
he's been hunting in switches for the entirety of the postseason pick and rolls a lot of teams have been trying to you know decimate what he can do as a defender and really take advantage of you know his inability to really guard John Morant's instance you know he, he's not one of those guards where he's undersized right I mean he has a slim frame but he has all the suitable tangibles to be an adequate defender at the NBA level so it is a little bit weird and a little bit disappointing to see him be someone who's just been vilified defensively from that aspect of his game and I definitely want to see him you know play what a little bit more of a sense of urgency right because we know offensively he's definitely going to give you know 110 percent on that side of the basketball so i would like to see that on both ends and you know speaking of john ja morant offensively john ja morant and this memphis grizzlies team they decided to run a few horn sets because golden state went uh, zone they brought out the one two two i believe in the second quarter and you know i believe that was probably the spark of golden state being able to you know take over in this game you know they finished the second quarter with 38 points followed by the third quarter eruption where they had 37 points and then in the fourth quarter they scored a whopping 41 points if you're memphis that is just unacceptable you have to have you know some level of resistance defensively providing some pushback but once again you know just looking at golden state from an offensive perspective you know they have just all the advantages they were able to you know find a lot of opportunities to score the basketball and drop offs with draymond green's ability to play make in the short role finding open cutters andrew wiggins Otto porter jr who definitely had himself a night especially in that first half you know just doing a, a little bit of everything both offensively and defensively scoring in transition being able to minimize this memphis grizzlies half court offense and you know just being that next man up in gary payton ii's absence on both sides of the basketball so that was really great to see and you know uh, going back to John Morant, you know, Andrew Wiggins started out the game defending him defensively in Gary Payton the second's absence. I thought John Morant, you know, he has definitely answered the call within this series, right? And I think heading into this matchup, there were some things that Golden State could look to to exploit in terms, you know, John Morant's inabilities, uh, in, in terms of his deficiencies that he has from an offensive perspective. And, you know, that is the lack of shooting on <clears throat> on ball. You know, he does a really good job in terms of shooting the basketball off the catch. I believe he's probably a little bit better in those instances, especially when he gets his feet set. But, you know, John Morant, he's not necessarily a guy who is going to just, you know, punish the defense time and time again with his outside shooting. But nonetheless, in in this series he has been shooting at least league average from beyond the arc and fun fact he, he actually has made more three-point attempts and outside shots than Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson combined in this series we know Klay Thompson you know he's had a bit of a rut shooting the basketball and you know he's been rather inconsistent all year and I think you know just to mention Klay Thompson within this series I think Golden State Warriors fans and you know just NBA media basketball personalities in general I think we all have to give Klay Thompson a break to think that you know this is a guy who was going to come back off a torn acl automatically come right into his original form i think that's you know it, it's a bit outlandish you know i think if you really sit here and analyze you know how golden state plays you know he's not playing in that similar role and doing the similar things that he was doing back in 2019 before the injury you know this is a completely different roster hell the nba is a lot different you know and you know i think clay thompson a guy like him you know you just have to give these guys a year to you know kind of find their way find their rhythm and you know kind of get the groove back into things because you know it, it, coming off of it, the many injuries that he had you know granted he he suffered from two gruesome injuries that kept him out for you know an extended period of time you know he hasn't played basketball the nba looked completely different the last time we've seen clay thompson in a basketball jersey so i think you know uh, nba fans warriors fans media personalities we all have to you know just kind of give clay thompson a little bit of grief here and, you know kind of allow him to work his way back into things i think it's really unrealistic to think that you know this is a guy that's just going to come back be able to create on his own and then be the primary person in the point of attack role defensively limiting the opposing team's best player i think that's just a little bit outlandish for people to really expect that out of clay thompson and we just have to give this guy a little bit of time to you know build a rhythm and you know kind of get acclimated into certain things but on another note just to talk about some positives and once again with the golden state warriors they were just very efficient for the majority of this night offensively outside of the 14 turnovers committed in the first half and the 17 turnovers overall within the game you know they did a great job in terms of scoring in all dynamics right 62 points in the paint really took advantage of the lack of interior presence defensively that you know this memphis grizzlies team provides i talked about you know jaron jackson jr xavier tillman 
both of these guys you know really struggling defensively in terms you know guarding on the perimeter and in the interior wise they they have not really been able to really benefit from that uh standpoint either and xavier tillman he's not a point of attack guy he's not somebody that you know is gonna overwhelm you with athleticism so memphis is gonna have to find better ways to, you know just be able to minimize that and i think it starts with their production defensively on the perimeter you know guys like tyus jones must step up i know there's a little bit of a height disadvantage there you know and looking at golden state this is a team that you know has all the intangibles in terms of you know them being a, a lot longer having wider wingspan and then, you, you know they, they have uh, somewhat similar athleticism you know when you when you're looking at guys like Kamingo who give you spot minutes you know he obviously brings a lot to the table from that perspective and things of that nature but you know all in all Golden State you know they stuck to their game plan you know they did a phenomenal job in terms you know in terms of getting everyone involved finished the night with 34 assists had a lot of success in a 1-2-2 zone especially against Ja Moran and what I will say you know although you know Memphis had a little bit of success with them utilizing that horn set you know I think Xavier Tillman was a screener in most instances and Zaire Williamson was a guy you know kind of on the opposing side of you know Xavier Tillman and then leading out to him spacing out the floor you know outside of that Memphis really did not have a true objective offensively here either right and I just don't know exactly where they can look to what matchups they can be able to point at that can allow them to really get back into this series and you know i think tonight maybe it looked a little bit different because they were shorthanded without dylan brooks within the lineup and maybe you know his added floor spacing and you know his little bit of individual creation and being able to you know put the ball on the floor to get to the rim you know something that like guys like desmond bain you know have struggled with within this entire series maybe they could have possibly used that tonight or you know just his presence overall um uh, from a defensive perspective maybe you know he he would have been somebody that could have ignited this team overall but all in all i think taylor jenkins you know he's got to find better ways to, you know just uh put this memphis grizzlies team in position to really succeed i think the small ball lineups there are a few positives offensively just having multiple ball handlers multiple guys who can be able to you know um create things on their own in terms of, you know tight jones being able to initiate the offense and you know do things in handoffs with john ja Morant as well right next to him in that lead guard role but you know i think defensively they're just losing too much and that was a key reason why you know outside of them turning the ball over and not really getting getting back in transition defensively off of made buckets that's why golden state was really able to you know maximize offensively and put up 142 points in this game in my opinion but hey you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or you're listening to apple Podcasts or spotify make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe turn on post notification give us a nice review on apple Podcasts and spotify but besides that it's your boy nicey chunky benny you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god